Pagaclone is a pharmaceutical substance that was studied for anxiety, panic disorder, and stuttering, but ultimately abandoned. It has sometimes been sold through online stores, but it is used by very few people now that the studies have ended. For a time, it was one of the most promising drugs for stuttering due to its apparent efficacy and minimal side effect profile. As with any drug, the most I can do is provide an outline of the typical effects. Your experience is not going to perfectly match the description I provide, since there are different ways people can respond to a drug. The effects are similar to what's offered by benzodiazepines, though it tends to be weaker overall and biased towards anxiety rather than sleep or muscle relaxation. It's been described as an anxiolysis-specific GABAergic, which could make it useful in medicine and in social situations. The strength of its effects is not great enough to set it apart from benzodiazepines, and at doses sufficient to potentially make it a more recreational drug, it could produce similar levels of impairment to higher benzodiazepine doses. We have very few reports of its effects in non-medical settings, other than a 2006 paper that investigated its abuse potential. That report found it produces a similar level of pleasurable and unpleasant effects to diazepam at a high non-medical dose of 4 0.8 milligrams, whereas at 1.2 milligrams, which is closer to the investigated therapeutic dose, it didn't have much potential for abuse, though it was impairing. In its early history, the drug was investigated for anxiety and panic with the hope of finding a benzodiazepine alternative with fewer adverse effects. Companies were interested in Pagaclone because animal studies showed it could produce anxiolytic-like effects without sedation, and in humans, it did not have the same EEG changes as typical benzodiazepines. The small amount of published data showed it was effective in humans with panic disorder and it was similar to placebo for side effects, but subsequent studies reportedly found it was not substantially superior to existing treatments, so it was never brought to market for that purpose. However, a few patients in those trials happened to suffer from stuttering and their condition unexpectedly improved while receiving pagaclone. Intrigued by these results, researchers began investigating it as a stuttering treatment. Stuttering is a speech disorder with symptoms like repetition of sounds or syllables, sound prolongations, broken words, and excessive tension during speech. Few good treatments are available for the condition, which may involve excessive dopamine activity. Trials of SSRIs and benzodiazepines have not shown significant benefit. Antipsychotics do have some efficacy, but their side effect profile makes them undesirable. This made pagaclone a worthwhile topic of exploration. A controlled trial of 132 patients found pagaclone did improve symptoms significantly more than placebo over the course of eight weeks, and benefits continued to exist for up to a year during an open-label extension period. Because of these findings, a larger phase three trial was pursued, but the results were not as substantial. Development of pagaclone for stuttering was then abandoned, despite all of the hope that surrounded it for a few years. Pagaclone is a member of the cyclopyrrolone class of non-benzodiazepines, which also includes the sleep medication Zopaclone. Its structure consists of a core isoindolin one own ring system with a secondary 7 chloro one 8 naphtheridine 2 il ring system bound at its 2 position, and a 5-methyl-2-oxohexyl sidechain bound at its 3 position. Initially, the racemate was studied, but eventually the dextrorotatory enantiomer was isolated as the active component. Early studies found it was mostly a partial agonist at the GABA-A benzodiazepine site and was more selective than diazepam. Selectivity is also what distinguishes the Z-drugs, like Zopiclone, from benzodiazepines. It primarily interacts with GABA-A receptors featuring alpha-1, alpha-2, alpha-3, and alpha-5 subunits. It's essentially a full agonist at the alpha-3 subtype, while it's a partial agonist at the rest. Animal studies found it produced very little sedation, and some evidence indicated it could be less prone to causing physical dependence. Studies in animals and humans have found a metabolite 5'-prime hydroxypagaclone is present at a high concentration. In rats, it's present at an even higher level than pagaclone itself, while also being more potent as a GABA-A benzodiazepine agonist. Unlike pagaclone, it's a full agonist at both the alpha-1 and alpha-3 subtypes, while being a partial agonist at alpha-2 and alpha-5. Because of how extensively pagaclone is metabolized and how active its metabolite is, 5 prime hydroxypagaclone may be the primary active drug when people are given pagaclone.
The available studies use doses of 0.3 to 0.6 milligrams per day. Those amounts are active, but some people have used much larger doses, which could come with greater non-medical properties. It's important to carefully measure your dose. When taking a potent substance like pachyclone, volumetric dosing is ideal since the average milligram scale cannot accurately measure at the single milligram level. Luckily, it's not a highly risky substance at higher doses, as seen in the abuse usability study, which found 4.8 milligrams did not produce unconsciousness. Pagaclone was discovered by Rhone Poulenc, later known as Aventus, in France, and then licensed to Interneuron Pharmaceuticals, which became Indivis. Indivis, for a time, licensed it to Pfizer, but when the results for panic and anxiety were underwhelming, Pfizer gave back its rights to the drug in 2002. By 2005, Indivis pivoted to the use of Pagaclone for stuttering, and it received some media attention as a promising treatment around this time. There was also some investigation of the drug for premature ejaculation, but it was abandoned due to insufficient efficacy. Indivis said it was moving towards phase 3 trials and regulatory approval in 2006, and it entered into a new partnership with Teva Pharmaceuticals to develop the drug in 2008. One of the main Pagaclone researchers, Dr. Gerald Maguire, revealed in 2010 that the latest study results were not impressive, and while it could have some efficacy in stuttering, a different drug called acenapine, which is used as an anti psychotic would likely be superior. Research basically came to an end by the 2010s. After this time, there was still some interest in the substance from the stuttering community due to anecdotal reports of success. It was also sold online, though it was never widely used. As of 2018, it's never been commercialized and is an uncommon drug. As of June 2018, Pagaclone is not specifically controlled in the US, Canada, Australia, or the UK, though it would fall under the Psychoactive Substances Act in the UK. At the low medical doses of 0.3 to 0.6 milligrams per day, the side effects of Pagaclone were minimal and not very concerning. It could cause drowsiness, headache, and impairment in some individuals, but that's about the extent of the concern at those doses. Even at higher amounts, such as the 4.8 milligrams used in the abusability study, the primary issue is impairment. A direct toxic effect capable of causing death is unlikely to be reached at the doses discussed in this video. There could be a lethal dose, but we don't know what it is. Regardless, sticking to the lowest effective dose is a good idea. Though physical dependence might not build like it does with benzodiazepines, it probably does build over a sufficient length of time, leading to tolerance and potentially withdrawal symptoms like increased anxiety and insomnia. Some of the risky combinations include sedatives like alcohol, benzodiazepines, and opioids. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. The Drug Classroom is only funded by donations. This content is possible due to listener support. If you want to support, you can do so through Patreon, PayPal, or Bitcoin.